John here, guys, and today is the Cine Whoop Roundup. That's right. If you have been looking into getting a Cine Whoop in order to get cinematic drone footage, then look no further because we're going to compare all of the popular options on the market, including whether you should buy it or build it, and what the bespoke custom builder options are as well. Uh, Cine Whooping has been getting more and more popular um, these days, especially in the latest two releases of GoPros, the GoPro Hero 9 which I have a mount for this on this Shindrone Squirt V2, as well as their newly released GoPro Hero 10. The footage on both of those cameras has incredible amounts of stabilization built in. And in addition to that, um, they're also reasonably light and reasonably inexpensive if you compare them to a full-fledged cinema camera. If you want to get cine lifter footage, which is studio grade uh, footage, you're going to have to spend many, many more times that as the Red Komodo introductory price is about $6,000. Then you're going to want to add about two to $3,000 worth of lenses. Then you're going to need about a $1,500 to $3,500 drone to carry it. So for cinematic footage that is the standard for most projects, this is the size that you're going to want to be using. Now, there are a lot of fantastic Cinewoop options on the market, but spoiler alert, the best overall one, if you could only have one, and if you wanted to just skip to the end and know which one is most used by professionals, it is the Squirt V2 slammed version in the Droneco upgraded modification way. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more at the end, but, Spoiler alert, this is the one most used. But if your goal though was to have something that was ducted, protected, powerful, lightweight, faster than your average cinema, if you cared a little bit more about crashability versus um, cinematic qualities, then the custom race whoop might be the answer for you. This one is very interesting design. It's an open source design that has just two carbon plates at the top and bottom and the ducts itself actually fit together and provide the structure of the frame. The ducts themselves are actually also the motor mounts for this. These ducts are printed out of nylon or PTCPE, which is a nylon derivative. And uh, it's very strong and very cool. This does end up a little bit heavier. So you're gonna wanna accommodate that with some larger size motors. In this case, I'm using the Toka by Diatone 2203.5, 2650KB with some hex blade props on there in a pusher configuration. So this is probably gonna have about the best performance out there that you can get. It does up in a little bit heavy and it also ends up a little bit tricky to build because you basically have to take the whole entire thing apart to service it. It's kind of tricky to fit everything in there, but once you do, it's super, super tough. I've seen people race these through like uh, buildings or bandos and whatnot, a place where a regular race drone would not hold up to all of the concrete and girders everywhere. That's a good option for this. So for maximum bas bashability and performance as high as you wanna take it with the larger size motor, Race Whoop, this is open source. HDLRC now makes a bonafide version of this. I'll have the link for that below. What if you wanna do a build that was simpler, easy to access and ultra lightweight? That is the FPV Cycle Cinesplore. This is also cool because you can buy some cheap ducks that go on here or you can print your own. I printed these out of PETG. Now normally you wanna have all ducks printed out of TPU. That's a little bit more flexible, but this duck design actually lends itself quite nicely for a rigid duck and PETG. EDG is going to be stronger and a little bit more flexible than PLA. So it's going to work for this just right. If you did have a hard enough hit, it probably would shatter. But since you can print these at home, if you have a printer that can do PETG, you can just make a never ending supply of spares. I've never managed to crack one. This is using the special FPV cycle 2203 size motor. This is the high KV version the uh, 3450 KV version. I run this on 4S with the eight blade, three inch uh, Cinewoop props. This is so easy and lightweight to, to build up. It's lighter than pretty much all the other ones here. And uh, because it has a larger size motor and a true duct design that gets a nice amount of thrust, you are gonna be able to go quite fast with this. Now, 
a lot of FPV cycles are kind of right on the line. And sometimes they're a little bit tricky to tune. So if you are gonna do this, I could never get mine to fly perfectly. Um, but I think Emuflight is probably the solution for that. I'll probably try that later. Now, if you are running real steady go or hyper smooth on one of the later GoPros, that's gonna smooth everything out for you. But I did notice when I was actually flying it, it didn't seem as nice and smooth as some of the other options here. But for speed, if you were carrying a GoPro and you needed to chase something with a motor. In the review for this quad, I actually was chasing Yvonne who was on a four wheeler moving pretty fast. And this was what I used to do that so I could get close to him, but still have the protection of a Cinewoop. So that is the Cinesplore. What if you don't want to build? What if you just want to buy it, go out and fly it? After all, these are tools. This is essentially a flying camera. This is not a park flyer. If you want to go park flying and get some action camera footage, build up a full size five inch or if you want to go to a smaller area do something like this baby hawk hd with this tiny little naked firefly x camera on board this doesn't have ducks so it's going to fly better it's going to be lighter the motors are not going to be as overworked people want the ducks because they think it's safer it's like training wheels but in actuality by the time we over load these things with tons of weight they don't really fly the same way a regular freestyle drone would fly they fly overweight it's like trying to learn how to fly a limo or a school bus compared to a race car this is a flying camera it would just be like me walking around with a gimbal to get super smooth footage except this can go to the top of treetops and a gimbal i was walking by hand could only go to the length of my arm that's kind of what these are for so if you want to buy one the best option on the market for that is the Protec series. Now you have the Protec 3.5 and the Protec 25. Now the Protec 35 is very interesting because it uses a large 2203, I believe, size motor along with three and a half inch props that gives you more thrust more power more speed than any of the other options that we've discussed that extra disc area allows you to go a little bit faster now downsides of that is it's a little bit heavy and it's also um, incredibly loud now every center whoop is louder than your average drone but that one is louder to another magnitude it sounds like 20 blenders like surrounding your head i'm afraid you're just too darn loud it's so large so you're not going to want to fly anything like that inside or too close to people even if you're protected by the ducks it's going to freak them out so if you do have to do that give them some fair warning now if you want to get up and closer and you don't need that extra speed the protec 25 right here is really going to be a nice option you can see compared to the sense board how much smaller the footprint of that is and my flight has really been on point with their motor and prop combinations on these sin whoops. This one uses a high KV at 5,500 KV for this two and a half inch prop. They also designed a special sin whoop prop that is a very steep pitch and a very wide bull nose blade. That's gonna give you the maximum amount of thrust. Any of the other two and a half inch bind flies I tried were super, super underpowered and I thought they were just garbage. This one does give you enough to control to where you can fly a full-size GoPro like this Hero 9 or the new 10 very comfortably. So if you needed to have a Cinewoop and go slow and be small, the Protect 25, if you needed one to have a little bit more speed, the 35, if you need to have both, you can have a pair. And it's just like camera guys, as we have a long lens and a short lens, you have that focal length covered any which way you go. And that's what it's kind of like having various Cinewoops. These are all tools, no different than the tripod that I'm shooting on right now. It's a camera modifier. Now, what about if you wanted something even smaller and you didn't need to carry a GoPro? What if you only needed to carry something like the Insta360 Go 2? Well, this little pusher 2 inch, the C85 HD by iFlight, has been the best one that I've tried so far. It has DJ on board, it's lightweight, it's small, you can fit a 3S or a 4S battery on there, and it carries this thing with the amount of control, almost the same amount of control as a regular Whoop, and you keep the weight low. So you can get some 4K footage with that Insta360 Go. It's super light. You don't have to worry about it bumping up stuff like that. It's also in a pusher configuration with prop guards versus ducks. So you don't get as much of that prop wash. As you can see, all the popular options have learned that if you get a powerful motor, you don't need the extra 
thrust of a duct. And by changing it out to a guard, you then have less of that annoying Cinewoop prop wash that makes it difficult to fly and control under certain scenarios. So if you wanted something small, go like this. Now, what about the diatone um, takens and the Cinebees and the green hornets? I mean, Honestly, the Protec series has seemed to perform better than all of them. So if you are going to buy, I would probably go that route. But if you want what the professionals use, it's the Slam Squirt V2. This is the drone co configuration. I really, really like what Chris Teal has done with this drone co camera mount and that it has this modular action cam mounting system. This is one of the coolest uh, action cam mounting systems. This is the mount for the Hero 9, but I could just as easily change this out to a session and any of the other heroes. And all I got to do is change this part this top part and it just fits right on there. This is the Johnny Five edition of the Slam Squirt V2. I'm gonna have this up on the channel very, very soon in a full review and talk about how I stripped 55 grams off of the Quad Standard Labs formula. Now, if you want to buy one of these pre-assembled, you can get one from Drumco or Quad, Quad Standard Labs. I'll have the links for both of those below. If you get the uh, Quad Standard Labs, be sure to select the Johnny Five code. That'll help me out a little bit. Now, what about the new Terraplane that just hit the market? You just saw Nurk's video on that and you wanna know about that. Well, I have some of those ducks right here. Look how large it is. And some of these new uh, props right here that have six blades that are the larger 85 millimeter prop size. So that means you're gonna have more disc area, larger prop and larger motor. Now on Nurk's video, he used a full size 2207 motor on high KV, 2550 KV. Now, uh, that has been the secret, is getting a motor that can spin really, really fast because you don't have five inch props. So if you have a smaller prop, you need the motor to spin faster to get that same amount of lift. So I think that's more of a professional tool. I may end up checking out the Terraplane pretty soon. I am curious about it, but you're increasing the cost and you're increasing the weight. So the reason why you would wanna do that is if you want a little bit more control at higher speeds. I typically don't need to follow anything that is moving faster than a walking or jogging pace. So for me, I'm probably gonna stick with the Square V2 for my main quad. It's lighter, it's cheaper. It's a little bit, uh, it's totally, on 6S, it's totally easy for me to control. Now, the secret to the Quad Standard Labs version, which is the best control and power that I felt on a Cinewhoop scale, is the 1507 3100 KV motor on 6S. That sounds very high for 6S, right? Well, and I didn't think 6S was really a requirement for these Cinewhoops. I thought it was kind of pointless because to me, 6S was for going fast on a racetrack. 6S was for going punchy in a freestyle setting. But I didn't really think about it until I had flown it and I noticed the difference was much greater than I thought it was going to be. And that's because these things are carrying so much weight that you tend to fly them in the 40 to 60 to 70% throttle range. So now that you have that extra 6S headroom for getting less battery sag, you can get extra flight time. You can get extra punches. You can get extra punches without sagging out the battery. So 6S is actually a must, much different than what I originally thought. I thought it was pointless. I was wrong, guys. I was wrong. So on the Terraplane, I'm gonna you would want to run a high KV motor like 2550 on 6S with these larger size props. So we'll see if I can get my hands on one of those. But I do think that for your average center whooper, if you're not going fast, just take the lower cost, the lower size, the lower weights and go with the Slam Squirt 2. What do you think in the comments, guys? What are you center whooping with? Do you have multiple center whoops? Do you just have one that you use on occasion when you need some nice footage? Does it actually replace something like a DJI Mavic? You know, all these tools are really cool, but sometimes having that top down footage that only a Mavic can get really well um, is pretty nice too. Thanks guys.